I'd like to explain the relationship between Google Drive and Google Classroom. These two tools work very, very closely together. Understanding their relationship will help you use Google Classroom more effectively. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that when you're on the home screen of Google Classroom, in the corner of each of your courses, you'll see a little folder icon. Clicking on that folder would take you to the associated folder for that classroom in Google Drive. We'll go there in just a minute. First thing I want to do is open up uh, this course. I'm going to switch to the classwork page and just also draw your attention on this page here. You're also going to see um, a link to the classroom drive folder as well as the calendar. Uh, it's just another way to get to the same place. Let's go ahead and uh, go in there and take a look at what we see. So I'm going to click on the classroom drive folder and that's going to open up uh, this folder here. Um, now in Google Drive you have a folder called Classroom. This folder gets automatically created the first time you start using Google Classroom. It is important that you not delete that folder or move or rename it. Things can get quite confusing if you do that. Um, I've gone ahead and added a little emoji symbol to the folder name um, to remind me that this is the Google Classroom folder and I shouldn't uh, mess around with it. Uh, you can also change the color of that folder if you want uh, to make it more visible um, and remind yourself of what that's for. Now I'm inside of the biology course and you'll notice that every time I create a new assignment in Google Classroom, a new folder is created for that assignment. So. create in classroom Google automatically creates a folder for each assignment and that's where your students work will be stored so right now we're working on this assignment here reason for the season and I can see all of my student files are neatly listed in here so for this assignment I had a template and I used the make a copy for each student option now Right now the students are working on this file and so it's interesting to note that the students are the owners of these files. So they have the full ability to edit and modify each of these files. When they submit this file through Google Classroom, they click that mark as done button, the ownership changes and I become the owner, which means they no longer have the ability to edit the file. They can only view it. And so that's why it's important for students to submit their files to you and then when you're done grading them it's important for you to return the file back to them so that the ownership gets transferred back into their account and then they're not sitting here in your Google Drive account. Now there really isn't a whole lot that you need to do here. Google Classroom just kind of manages this all for you, um, makes it very easy. You rarely need to send students into Google Drive either. I really encourage them to do all of their work through Google Classroom and Google will just manage everything on the back end. Now there's a couple of things that you're welcome to consider um, just from an organizational standpoint. I have another video where I talk about group projects and you have to create some uh, copies of those files in advance. I've gone ahead and stored those files here in the, the um, class folder rather than having them in my own personal drive files. So that's one thing that I'll do on occasion. Another thing that I do at the end of the school year is that my classroom folder gets quite overwhelming. I mean I have hundreds and hundreds of courses that I've created and they all just get listed here in Drive which is kind of overwhelming. And so what I will do is I will create an archive folder in Drive um, and I'll put the year on it. And so at the end of the 2018-19 school year, I'll create a new folder, pull all of the um, class folders in there, and that just collapses the list down. Now, obviously, Google Classroom itself has an archive feature. I do that as well. Um, so the classes disappear from Google Classroom, but the folders in Drive still sit here. And so um, I, I like to create these archive folders. Again, that's more just personal preference because I like things to be organized. It, it doesn't really change um, how Classroom uh, functions itself. That's a quick overview on how Drive and Classroom interact. Um, I'm going to post below this video some tips for organizing and managing files in your Google Drive account uh, to help you out even further.